You know, Lonzo has grown so much through tremendous adversity as an NBA pro. I mean, coming into the NBA, guy has to deal with his dad going on first take, going on this press run, talking about he's better than Steph Curry. Five on five game, he good. One on one, I'm undefeated, never lost. And that's your dad. You can't throw him under the bus. He's building your brand. He's selling your shoe. What you rocking zero twos? I'm blowing past some zero two. You know I got a zero two. Which completely tanked after you got hurt wearing it, and then it's just injuries. After injuries, after injuries, you start playing well, sprain your ankle. Start playing well, tear your meniscus in your rookie year, and from there on, you can't have a healthy season. Multiple changes of scenery. Lonzo Ball has played 50 games per year in the five years he's been in the NBA. He took a completely broken jump shot, shooting from his left shoulder, turned that into 44% from the three-point line on high volume. One of the best catch and shooters from the three-point line in the NBA. When he was on the court last year, and the Chicago Bulls are the first seed when he gets hurt, carry your meniscus in January, and uh, say goodbye to the season. Your recovery, I, I, I don't know, I don't know what the problem is. Like, is it a diet? Is it genetics? And to add fuel to the fire, of course, the East just has to stack the deck. You got teams like the Hawks, teams like the Cavs, making moves to put their team in a new tier whereas chicago bulls do absolutely nothing and so you can count out the teams you can count out the seven teams that will be finishing ahead of the bulls this year miami milwaukee boston philly cleveland atlanta brooklyn so lonzo ball is doubtful to start the year he's not going to be in training camp so he's not going to get his reps he's not going to be able to warm up for the season he's going to have to find his footing during the actual games which will cause for some growing pains probably after not having played for... At that point, it will be at least 10 months since he touched a basketball. You just gotta hope that he's everything that he was, and the Bulls will need it, because Patrick Williams is slated to be primary perimeter forward, guarding a Giannis, guarding a KD, and the Bulls still have Alex Caruso for taking on those backcourt matchups. And he will do a great job at that, but he is just one guy. You play against the Cleveland Cavaliers... He's going to have to take Spider Mitchell all game. Iodo Sumu, he had some great games playing defense on Trey Young and Darius Garland last year, and he will have to take that challenge once again. Going into year two, he will be the starting point guard for the team next year, I do believe. DeMar DeRozan is a year older. Coming off of his best season as an NBA pro last year, I would expect another season of greatness, but he will probably slightly decline, very slightly, and I would look more for zach levine to take that number one role at times during the year maybe by the end of the year he's the main guy on this team and for patrick williams to really step up and step into a role that is more scoring focused that is more playmaking focused just a bigger part of the offense a guy that is involved in plays and a guy that you want to get the ball to that has to command the defense's presence and attention we have not beat joel Embiid in the nba ever joel Embiid has never lost to us he sees Nikola Vucevic, he sees food, and there's not really much reason for me to expect that to change going into next year. Team like the Bucks, we have never had a way of stopping Giannis Antetokounmpo from doing anything and everything that he wants to. We had to deal with uh, absolute and utter insults to the game of basketball with pretty much you can look through the catalog of Chicago Bulls starting lineups, Chicago Bulls rosters that we've tried it out in the games span of 2017 18 season to 2020 21 but once you get demar Derozan and lonzo ball on the team a fresh start and you start off that season as a number one seed 30 some games in it's just crazy how far you can fall and that's not to say that the bulls will be terrible next year or anything but just with the way the east is operating right now it's hard to find a glimmer of hope you're not a team anybody's worried about everybody knows that we go up against the cream of the crop and we get shit on every time how do we counter that? Lonzo Ball has to be playing. That's one thing. Optimists can look at this headline and say, it's just doubtful for the start of the season. There's a chance he could be there for game one. Listen, I don't know if the people who made this report are taking into account the fact that Lonzo Ball has had setback after setback after setback with this knee injury, that he, sh he was supposed to be back. Initially, he was slated to be a six to eight week injury. And that was in January. It has been eight months. So there can be no assumptions made based on when he's going to return. 
there has to be concrete evidence that he is making progress for it to be progress because a week before the start of the season we could get that report that Lonzo Ball got another setback and it's not going to be surprising news if that happens it's just so rocky in comparison to these other teams that are adding something that are gaining momentum pushing into this next season moving forward there's so much moving forward and progress for a lot of these teams can you imagine how excited the Cleveland players are to get this season going to show what they can do. I mean, same with the Atlanta Hawks. Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, these guys, they've got momentum because they know that they're going to be a sharp increase from where they were. Philadelphia 76ers, even with the unfortunate way that they got bounced out last year, they know Joel Embiid is coming in healthy. Sounds like James Harden's had a really good offseason and that he's really locked in. He's working on his body. You're adding a guy like P.J. Tucker who's only going to help you in these playoff scenarios where you need a guy like that and DeAnthony Melton for your guard depth. I think Patrick Williams has to be a saving grace here. He's the only guy I can think of with the potential to make that big of a difference that was not there during the dark days of last year, and he did play in the playoffs. And him taking a step here is pretty much the only way that the Bulls can talk themselves into above play-in position. And you might need some luck for other guys getting hurt on other teams too, which doesn't really bode well considering the Chicago Bulls. Last year, team plagued by injuries, and this year, has to be different for them to succeed and so far already it's really not with Lonzo Ball and that's that is where all this pessimism comes in Nikola Vucevic needs a bounce back season if Nikola Vucevic comes out like he did last year or worse the floor is very low because the Bulls center position is an absolute problem it's an absolute mess we're one of the smallest teams in the league while also being a team that is not dependent and not strong in the category of shooting three-point shooting with Lonzo Ball being out so much, the best, highest percentage, highest volume three-point shooter on the team, a guy like Nikola Vucevic, whose jumper was broke all last year, needs to be able to make jump shots. Doesn't even need to be threes all the time. As long as you can get that mid-range shot going and consistent and make the defense respect and guard a pick and pop, there is an area you can at least help us. You give it, at least give us a vessel to rely on at some points during the game. And Zach and him, Ayo Dosumo and him, They've shown some really good two-man game and just being on the same page and knowing each other and how they move and being able to operate that pick and roll, pick and pop game. So if you can knock down jumpers too, which you were supposed to be able to do last year, it could do wonders for the offense. Either way, there's always reason to be optimistic for a longer term. Maybe the Chicago Bulls aren't going to be in the mix to win a championship this year, but you could never know what's going to happen in the midseason, the trade deadline who's gonna take a leap on the team, the young players might progress really well, stuff like that. And that's where all these preseason predictions and analyses have the potential to just be completely wrong. Because I feel like everybody's on the same page as it pertains to the top six or seven, eight teams in the East. Like we know who they are and same with the West. I think roughly uh, we understand the value of these teams to be pretty much the same, but we know that you can't predict what's gonna happen next. That's where this shit gets really interesting. So I guess the only optimism I can have is that of uncertainty, that we will be luckier than other teams. And it could very well happen. And, uh, you know, I'll look forward to that. So Chicago Bulls, we got some really shitty news with Lonzo Ball. And uh, hopefully that's all it is. Hopefully this is the worst of it. Hard for me to believe that at this current state. But uh, yeah, hope is, uh, hope is all we need.